Today I'm at Ford Proving Grounds out in Romeo, and behind me right here is the Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400. And beside me, we have Vaughn Gittin Jr. and Brian Novak. They're going to walk me through this Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400 and tell us what makes it so special. Well, it's certainly a moment that I will never forget. You know, somebody that is uh, very acclimated with driving very high horsepower Ford Mustangs uh, with internal combustion engines. I thought I knew what this thing was gonna feel like, but as soon as I drove it at full power for the first time, I realized I had no idea. It was uh, a life-changing experience for me. I'm Vaughn Gittin Jr., world champion drifter, professional fun haver, and founder at RTR Vehicles. Uh, it was myself and our technical director, Ray, in the passenger seat. We turned it up to full power and I stood on the throttle and literally scared myself. Like to the point of like the acceleration happened so hard and I slammed on the brakes. And like, was that supposed to happen? You know, cause an internal combustion engine car sometimes is, you know, running lean. It's faster than it ever should be till it's not. And so that was the moment that I realized the potential and why we should all be excited about electrification. So we at Ford Performance Motorsports are constantly looking at, at where we want to race in electric and then how do we learn what we can to help the rest of the companies. That's one of our key pillars is tech transfer that we can learn as much as we can and then bring that back to the mainstream and back to the mainstream car. My name is Brian Novak and I'm with Ford Performance Motorsports. So at the same time we're kind of doing this look and figure out what we want to work on. Vaughn has an idea in his head and uh, we ended up sitting in a meeting back in Dearborn and it turned out we were kind of all on the same wavelength of what we wanted to do. So, um, you know, it kind of went from there and, and now we have this beast sitting in front of us, uh, you know, Mustang Mach-E 1400. So, um, you know, it's a full motorsports build. So it started from a production Mach-E body in white. So just as it comes out of the factory, that's what we started with. Uh, and then, uh, you know, it's got a roll cage, it's got four seats. It is a full motorsport build. So it has its own uh, over the top powertrain. Um, has its own battery, so it allows us at Ford Performance to sit there and, uh, and demonstrate different technologies, demonstrate all-wheel drive or rear-wheel drive, demonstrate different battery chemistries and motor configurations. Um, you know, and it's been great to work alongside Vaughn and RTR, uh, you know, as a partner in this project, and, and you know, we, we've kind of come up with something amazing. At concept of this, there was not a Mustang uh, Mach-E body in white available. So uh, obviously that, that poses some challenges when you're going just from data to, to real life and then considering all the changes that are happening for production in tandem. But th this entire vehicle being a first of its kind, you know, I'm not gonna sit here and lie, it was a challenge from the beginning to the end. Also considering the tail end of this, we had a pandemic set in and, uh, you know, working through the challenges of, of, of staying on target. Um, but you know, some of my favorite things of this vehicle, in this vehicle, there's multiple configurations with suspension, steering, the braking system, everything is, is adjustable to support multiple types of driving and fun behind the wheel. Uh, you know, we, we go from, right now we're in all wheel drive uh, drift mode. Uh, so we have uh, street tires on it, um, but we can very easily take it to full blown road course mode and, and bolt slicks onto it. Uh, we also have a full drift mode where basically we will uh, change the lower control arms and the steering pickup point and allow us to get 65 degrees of steering angle. Uh, in all-wheel drive, we're limited by the angle of the CVs on, on the axles and things like that. So that is my absolute favorite thing about this vehicle, knowing that, you know, we're going to be drifting and, and, you know, not just driving this on a road course. You know, our conversation with the aero team was like, you know, how are you gonna make this to where it's linear and that, you know, when the car's at y'all, it's not gonna hit a brick wall and, and things like that. And uh, they did a very good job of that. They took a lot of things they've learned from WRC and integrated in this vehicle as far as when the car's sideways to not, you know, not lose, lose the downforce or not like hit a wall where it just creates some really weird uh, reactions. And so the car is like unbelievably linear in all motions at all angles. Uh, it creates about 2,300 uh, pounds of downforce at 160 miles an hour. 
Uh, that is not the top speed, but that is a good target for, for a lot of road courses and a lot of the speeds that, that you may see. But everything, and, and the one thing with, with working with Ford Performance, you know, everything on here is, is functional. So every duct that you see, right, I mean, there's obviously a massive splitter, it creates a lot of downforce, but this duct, um, we'll pull, pop, the, pop the front off here in a moment, um, is all for cooling. Um, all the arrow though that you see has a purpose, um, and it's either to manage the air or create cooling, uh, cooling uh, capabilities. The entire body uh, is still uh, factory aluminum. So all the fenders, the doors, the roof is factory aluminum. Uh, everything that we've added is carbon with the exception of uh, this piece. Uh, this is actually flax. Uh, so, you know, Ford, everything that Ford does in a vehicle like this, uh, is the goal, like Brian mentioned, is, is with respect to tech transfer and, and learnings that go back to production. So this is kind of an experimental material uh, it's super strong, it's extremely lightweight, similar to carbon, but obviously a very you know, sustainable material that, that comes from the ground. So um, that's, that's some really cool, special things. Uh, the wing uh, is a very special piece, I love it. Uh, I'm told I can do pull-ups on it, but I don't have, uh, I'm not interested in that risk factor in case I rip it apart because uh, they're very hard to, hard to make and, and not the cheapest thing in the world. The drivetrains are completely separate. Um, so there's three motors in the front uh, that are directly connected to a quick change differential. So the reason why we have a quick change is because that is basically our transmission. We don't have a transmission here, it's straight motors, direct drive to a differential. And so we can set our final drive depending upon what our goal is for the day, what track we're at, and what kind of activities we're doing. Um, you can see uh, a cantilever uh, suspension. Uh, you know, prior to this build, uh, one of RTR's halo builds was Ken Block's Unicorn RTR. And uh, this is very similar to the suspension packaging that, that we use for the Unicorn. It's, it's, you know, obviously looks very cool. It's very uh, hardcore motorsport style, but very easily to be accessible and make changes. Uh, you can see the two massive heat exchangers here. Um, one of them uh, runs water through the inverters to keep the inverters cool. The other runs dielectric fluid through the three motors, uh, which, which keeps them cool as well. Beyond that, you know, you can see everything is modular, you know, as with uh, all motorsport, there's a chance of uh, situations that can happen. So we've built this vehicle to be able to, um, you know, be repaired and, and kind of have that mindset. Also, uh, we expect this vehicle to evolve. So if we ever need to make changes, we want to try, you know, some new differentials or different types of motors, those kind of things can be adaptable in the future. You know, this is a living, breathing demonstrator for learning. So that was a, a very important uh, factor. And so very similar setup in the back. Uh, it's a little bit more work to take the back off and remove the ducting. Um, but uh, same thing, two heat exchangers, except for a four motor stack versus three. And then, um, you know, there's three inverters. And for those of you that don't understand electrification, the way that it works is basically there's a 700 volt battery that is here uh, in between the wheels, basically the same, same exact location as the production Mach-E. Uh, gives a great low center gravity, which makes this, uh, you know, 5,000 pound vehicle feel like a go-kart. And then that power is directly connected to inverters. So there's one inverter per motor. And those inverters take those 700 volts and give that power output to each motor based on whatever we're commanding through the, through the computers. Um, and then there is a, a DC to DC uh, converter, which basically takes that 700 volts, converts it to 12 volt, and runs all the 12 volt power systems, all the data acquisition, all the battery management systems, uh, the, uh, you know, the electric power steering, and uh, the electric braking, which I think is something that you should you should share because it's really cool. Yeah, so in, in this case, we've actually put in a, uh, an EBB, which is an electronic brake booster. So this is actually out of a Ford vehicle. Uh, you know, we're able to integrate it, that into this. And so what that allows us to do is, you know, the whole point of putting an EBB, and obviously these will uh, do regenerative braking as well. So that EBB will do ABS, it'll do all kind of the standard things, but it also allows us to 
uh, to balance that with the regenerative braking uh, that happens in the vehicle and how that braking works. So uh, that's something we're under development with and working on it, but that's the whole point of this. And as Vaughn alluded to, the modularity of the vehicle um, that we're able to learn that sort of thing so we can make all those different chassis changes and make aero changes and make drivetrain changes and then how does that affect how the car brakes how you know and, and how does it affect how it put, puts the power down we're able to look at all those different things and that's the whole point of this and the whole point of, of Ford performance is being able to learn those sorts of things and, and figure that stuff out yeah so from a, I mean from a cooling standpoint obviously it has the separate cooling circuits for the uh, for the motors uh, and the inverters. The other thing that this one actually does is we've actually designed it and we're working on this is doing is cooling the battery during a charge. So essentially this is a very high performance demonstrator and anything that puts out this much amperage generates a lot of heat. So what that allows us to do is actually run coolant through the battery while it's actually being charged and that'll actually quickly drop the battery temperature and we can get back right out with the car. So we're sitting inside the Ford Mustang Mach-E 1400 and uh, very quickly, you know, you can see it's a very race car interior. Uh, the only thing carryover from production is uh, the center dash here and uh, obviously uh, the throttle pedal, which is uh, a, a nice little nice feature that I love is standing on that thing. So what you see is we wanted to show, you know, everyone pops a hood in internal combustion engine vehicles. Um, but this is, when you look in here, you can see this is very much an electric vehicle. These are the inverters. So you can see a stack of four in the back, three in the front. Uh, and then this is the DC to DC uh, converter. And you can obviously see the wires. Those are directly hot to the battery, um, but all insulated, all safe, obviously. One of my favorite features that we had to have was the handbrake. And uh, there is only two pedals over here. So no clutch, uh, you know, like, like you're used to seeing in a lot of motorsports vehicles, but very simple to the point. I uh, got a very large MoTeC dash. Um, and uh, yeah, that's really it. The, the biggest thing in here, and one of the challenges we had was, you know, we wanted the, the cage to be uh, FIA, you know, mindset and approved so we could run on tracks all over the world. And the challenge was, there's no rules for a, you know, a four door race car. So uh, we had to work through that and adapt that, but this is all super safe and uh, which is a priority, especially when we're gonna have, you know, four passengers or sorry, three passengers in here and uh, plus a driver. So the goal was smiles on faces and, uh, you know, share perspective. You know, I thought that the throttle inputs and things would be so much, uh, so much more challenging and it'd be a huge adjustment. You can map everything. And the cool thing about electric motors, you have full control. So we've mapped the accelerator. It acts very much like an internal combustion engine where it, you know, if you floor it 100%, you're getting 100% power, but it's very linear and progressive, you know? So their throttle control is a non-issue. Like it's very easy to drive. In fact, impressively easy. The, uh, the, the one thing that was adapting to is a difference in noise. We didn't think that this car was gonna make any noise. And, and we also have a, you know, a kind of development sound generation system on it that we've been working on Harman on. The car makes a, a very unique noise, but it's very, uh, you very quickly adapt to drive off it. I mean, you know, the, the, the noise of an engine is not only enjoyable, but it's also a cue and a sense that you drive with. And uh, this, this, this offers that, it's just a, a unique uh, cue and, and a unique sense that, that uh, is very quickly and easy to adapt to.